Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. So, Match's monthly report is now available. In this video, I'm going to go through and break down all of the new stuff that we don't know about. Obviously, a lot of what they have been working on has been Alpha 3.5, but we'll skip over most of that, apart from a couple of sections. Kicking off with AI and characters, they've improved the combat behaviours to make it easier to assign different tactics to characters. Plus, they've integrated the collision avoidance system so that AI walk and avoid items in their path realistically. For AI ships, they've implemented new pilot skill levels which vary the agility of enemy ships and determine how they balance self-preservation and aggression. For animation, there's been a lot of focus on Tisha and Reco and the ship dealer, plus implementing the new female emotes, the final jump system and the combat AI system by adding new weapon options for enemies to use against players. The art environment have refined and tweaked places like Hearst and Lawville to improve the visual experience, also looking into ways to better scale the natural features like canyons and we got this really cool image. Uh, I can't wait to be exploring those sort of places. For tech art, they have worked on the UI for the character customizer version 2, which is coming in 3.6. Done some tasks to extend the DNA gene pool, which were completed. This will expand the current nine heads uh, we have available to choose from in 3.5. And also fixed a lot of weapon related bugs and helped with the first implementation of the new usable system. In audio, they have worked heavily on the new flights, model sounds, which include effects for strain and vibration, afterburners, maneuvering thrusters and atmospheric flight. They spent a lot of time on Area 18 and the new weapons, which came in 3.5, improved some of the Foley sounds, like better footstep material recognition, redesigned depressurized footsteps and varying footstep effects, depending on characters' heaviness and footwear. And I have to say, I have noticed, depending on whether I'm wearing uh, an armor piece or just a jumpsuit, the, the difference in sound, it actually sounds like you are Stepping heavier, but also wearing more things. For design, they've improved the ECN and NPC spoofing missions. Basically, when NPCs send out service beacons requesting help. And in regards to economy, a system was built to create a robust and modular representation of item variants, which is now ready when needed, and inventories were all added to the new locations as well. In engineering, the teams worked on a TSAA, with general quality improvements resulting in less flickering and a sharper picture. For hair, they added an experimental option for custom tangents, amongst other things, plus they've added card support for hair physically based rendering shader. For planetary ground fog, this is coming in 3.6. They refined the proxy mesh tessellation. They did the first ray marching test and implementation and refined modeling of the fog gradients over terrain. Unfortunately, they're not really shown as much of that, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this will create this uneasy ambience around planetary locations. It's going to be really cool. They're also improving load times by creating a new load time profiler, amended the I.O. scheduler for SSDs and hard drives uh, to give faster times and response, and vastly improved file access in the shader system to speed up initialization at startup. For features in gameplay, They've worked on improvements to the video com streaming along with the character customizer and female characters. In features vehicles, they've done improvements to the gimbal weapons, the radar and scanning system, and the item port tech. Plus a final stretch spent fixing game crashes and bugs. For graphics, the team better aligned the sun and shadows with fog in large spaces like hangars and fixed a persistent glitch with indoor lights. Graphics got in on the gas cloud, feature supporting design, adding the ability to rotate tunnel pieces and create a more intelligent streaming system to enable the layout of large sections of the game without running over the memory budget. In level design, the planning has begun on the procedural tool and the next set of procedural space stations. Prototyping was also done on cave layouts and potential gameplay was ideated in cooperation with environmental art team. Hopefully, we'll get to see a little bit more on what type of gameplay they have uh, for version 1 of the cave layouts, it would be interesting to see. For lighting, they've mostly focused on Area 18, uh, ensuring that the maximum lighting quality was reached but within a defined frame budget for performance reasons, along with lighting for the character customizer and Echo 11 map in Star Marine. Narrative worked on creating the procedural nodes and manufacturing locations for all of Star Citizen's cooperations, 
for the expanding economy system. This also means a review of item inventories in Stanton's shops to ensure that they carry items appropriate to their location. They've also filled Area 18 with a variety of posters, ads and props. Plus, apparently Alpha 3.5 will provide the first look at the new Banu language. And it says to keep an eye out for that. I think it might be a poster. Potentially, we'll have to have a look at that one. Uh, QA has focused on any issues with the new mission givers, uh, improving the transit system and memory corruption testing to help track down crashes that occur randomly during general gameplay. Ship Art have spent time getting the components modelled and work has moved on to a new ship, which is currently in the white box phase. It didn't specify which. Work also continues on the Banu Defender to get it through the grey box phase. It's assigned extra help to ensure that it's completed in time due to everything on the ship being brand new and not reused from other ships. In system design, Walla actually received a unique mining resource called Atasamite, and the bartender and vendor AI behavior has been added to to make them serve drinks or give players items from a shelf and a weapon rack. Turbulent worked on the voice servers which were upgraded with the benefit of RTCP, which is a data channel. This improvement enables active speaker detection in comms channels, so prioritizing a speaker, uh, and continued to improve the long distance calls. For UI, they've progressed on the area map to help distinguish between different floors of an interior. Really looking forward to getting the, in the interior map, so we've not really seen it much since the last time. Uh, for vehicles, the 890 Jump just completed the grey box phase and is now heading into final art. The Karak now has a whole engineering section done to grey box and in habitation it's only missing the captain's quarters which is to be grey box complete soon. The Vanguard series is heading into the final art stage with the rear section and cockpit both receiving a pass. Character concept team was actually called on to build the foundation for the Taveran species that will be used to help design the Esperia Prowler which is quite exciting. And pre-production begun on the P-52 Merlin update, the P-72 Archimedes and of course the Prowler itself. For visual effects they rolled out the new GPU particle lighting changes which include this new optional uh, specular shading model for particles. You can see in the picture here that the left smoke uses the old lighting and the right uses the new system with specular shading. The team is also reworking the older effects to take advantage of this new system on things like the EMP for example. They've also polished and optimized the new ballistic pistol and assault rifles and taken a first pass at the tachyon cannon plus a brand new weapon type which is in research and development phase. Finally for weapons they've started work on the Apocalypse Arms Animus Missile Launcher, the Claws and Verna Lumen SMG and new upgrade levels for various ship weapons. Anyway that was the monthly report, some really cool stuff, can't wait to see the Banu language although I am still working on the Jean language. Plus, the idea of developing the Taveran a little more uh, for the Esperia Prowler is going to be quite interesting. Hopefully, we'll have a feature on that as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, if you like my videos and want to help support my channel, do follow the link to my Patreon page below. It is much appreciated. Head over to twitch.tv forward slash Brothers Ryan and come hang out with us. And I shall see you next time.